Hello everyone, and welcome back to another 3D design and world building video. This week, we're going to be making a gatehouse in an old British style, but adapted and modified for a video game project. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers for joining. I'm really happy to have you here. Hopefully, you'll stick around as I continue to make new 3D worlds, and I'm sure we'll build some cool projects together in the months to come. And with that said, let's begin. We'll keep this one short today and hopefully give you a great overview of how to quickly knock together a good environment for Unreal Engine. When drawing from or referencing things that already exist in the real world, a good first step is to figure out how they look and how they work. Luckily, for gatehouses, there are thousands of examples across the UK. They've been built for literally hundreds of years in this country. The earlier ones were done for more defensive reasons, but the later ones were done for more decorative reasons, such as country house entrances and that sort of thing. And I think that's what we're going to go for. And once you understand how they work and how they look, you can start thinking about designing your own one and figuring out the kinds of architecture that you want to use. I always like to sketch a floor plan as well, because I build these to be used by players in games, so I need to make sure that they work in terms of player flow and movement. And once I understand how the building's going to work, I like to start massing it out using a 1x1 one one meter grid inside a 3D modelling program, so that you can start to figure out what kind of sizes the building's going to be and start to figure out where your modular joins and elements are going to be. Very quickly, you can start massing out building elements in really simple cuts and curves and boxes. I'll keep it simple, but everything is logically gridded right now, so it's going to make a lot of sense to model later. And then to take this model forward, just continue that process of cutting, adding a little bit more detail, extruding, cutting holes and things as needed, and you can start to introduce some more complex curves and shapes here and there. It's still going to be rough, but that's okay because it's on a grid and it's going to make your life a lot easier later. And then just keep going, just keep adding little bits of detail, little extrusions here and there, massing out new elements. I definitely think about which models are going to be split up into which parts later. For example, this window is going to be its own part in the final Unreal Engine file, so I'm modelling it so that it kind of interfaces gently with the wall. For an Unreal Engine project these days, you want to keep things low to medium poly, but definitely not high poly. You still want it to be easy to run inside Unreal Engine for different kinds of projects. Everything I build always is designed to work in virtual reality, so I really have to be careful with the number of polygons I put in my meshes. And you'll find that as you keep adding detail and small cuts and little pieces here and there, it'll kind of start to look like a piece of architecture. The transition from massing to actual architecture is quite gentle and you don't really necessarily notice it, but when you look back and see the progress, you can really see how the building is starting to come across. For texturing, I am using quite a lot of Megascans assets at the moment. For projects like this, where you've got to be fast, it's a really fantastic way of bringing a great sense of quality and realism to your models, while also being incredibly quick. We're going to use Substance Painter for a lot of the more detailed parts and more custom parts to really bring in a sense of detail and weathering to them. This is where you'd make a high detail mesh and then bake down all that detail onto a low or medium poly asset. And the result is a really nicely detailed part that looks pretty good, but also looks like it's made of actual architectural components. That's kind of the key to a project like this, is making something look like it's made out of real materials or parts made by craftspeople and designers, not just randomly modeled to be a block that kind of roughly looks like something if you squint. And now, take all those techniques and rinse and repeat for the different parts. For the long strip parts of the model, I made a trim sheet, which was just a really simple way of horizontally tiling different elements. It's a really fantastic way of adding detail to long strip pieces, and I recommend checking the technique out if you haven't used it before. Here's an example of one of the window objects, and this would be its own final mesh in the Unreal Engine scene. You can see how it's been texture unwrapped there. It's custom unwrapped because we're going to bake it inside Substance Painter. And that's what this is. So as you can see, we're really quickly just baking on a higher poly mesh on top of this low to medium poly mesh. It's bringing in a lot more detail and subdivision of the stones and the different architectural elements, as well as some great ambient occlusion. And then after that, in Substance Painter, you just lay on stones, dirt, wares, tears, variation, until you've got something that you like that kind of represents the kind of environmental exposure that the element would have. And now, once you've done all of that, let's jump into Unreal Engine and put together a quick test scene to see how this gatehouse looks once you've assembled some parts. The actual level design for this prototype is straight up not very good. I rushed it just to get something in the background. 
But the gatehouse itself is the focus of this, and the actual architecture and modeling is pretty interesting, I think. You can see how I split up and combined different parts of the model into meshes for Unreal Engine. I did this for a number of reasons, from draw calls to angles that you'd see things in, but as well as that it was just about kind of, you know, maintaining performance and grouping things together in ways that made logical sense. As well, obviously, you can see that I also made an interior, the exact same process of just massing things out and making sure that it all works, and it was really straightforward to do, just more of the same. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that I prototyped a virtual reality video game, and it was a lot of fun to do. But that prototype also represented something that I've been working towards for the last couple of years, to make and fully finish a full VR video game. And this level here is a part of that next step, a part of the larger world that I want to create. I chose to make this gatehouse first because it lets me really test out a fast workflow on one of the smaller buildings and one of the smaller elements of this game. Hopefully I'll be able to share more with you guys over the next few months and ask any questions that you'd like. So now back to this modelling, as you can see we're now just dropping down a few trees around the level. It really was just a quick way of getting some shadows cast onto this scene. Same for those mega scans assets I'm using in the background, it was just a really rushed way of adding some details to the frame. Now, for some finishing touches, we're just painting in some detail and dirt on the outside mesh, using vertex painting. This was a really quick material to set up, it was fairly straightforward, but it was just two versions of the same texture. One which was basic and clean, and the other which was really dirty and worn. And that was that. After dropping in some better HDRI lighting and doing a really detailed light bake, we've got a model. And it looks not too bad. I really like the way the trees are casting light on the surface of the mesh. And that stone texture is bringing a lot of realism and richness into the surfaces of the model, which I'm really happy with. I think the interior works as well, although this shot I'm showing you is slightly dark, that's just because of the baked lighting. The way I modelled the staircase I thought was really good, and that's some of the best wood texturing that I've ever personally achieved. And that's us pretty much done for this short project. I was really happy with the outcome, given the time that I had to complete it, and I think it's going to make a great addition to the story that I'm trying to tell over the next few months. As well as that, I hope just watching this overview of the process that I went through helped you to learn a thing or two about level design and environment modelling for 3D games. It doesn't matter what software you use, it doesn't matter what texturing program to use, or even what game engine you're going to use in the end. The process of building games is basically the same as designing a space. You just need to know how you want to make it and what it needs to be, and have some sort of plan to execute. Everything else is just practice and finesse and technical management of the software. And that's this gatehouse made. I produced it in between working on some consulting work, helping other people to make similar types of models and designs. But I'm going to be jumping back to full time on this project quite soon, so hopefully I'll be able to start putting out videos a little bit more quickly. It was a fairly straightforward model to make, but I was focusing more on speed and finesse rather than new techniques for this project. Because I'm in a full flow of a larger scale project, I want to make sure that I can just streamline what I'm doing and iterate and repeat quickly. I will hopefully get the chance to do another R&D phase to improve my techniques and pick up some new workflows, but right now I've just got to storm through as much actual content production as I can, and hopefully my upload schedule will reflect that over the next few months. And if you're new here and you'd like to stick around to learn more about Unreal and virtual reality and world building, please do feel free to subscribe and ask me any questions down in the comments below. I love chatting to people, it's always good fun. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, take care.